earlier today, we checked in with David Cordani. He has always been a straight shooter on Mad Money, the chairman and CEO of Cigna. Take a look. Mr. Cordani, welcome back to Mad Money. It's good to be with you, Jim. Yeah, it's great to see you. Last time I saw you, it's one of those situations where the stock is down big and people are concerned. And the stock only was great because it was about the PBM and how terrific a PBM can be for both the customer and for Cigna. So let's start with the idea that you had incredibly positive member count surprise. And I'd like to think that some of that is because people recognize that there is a great bargain to be had if you are with a pharmacy benefit manager. So, Jim, you're right. When you think about healthcare in the more broader sense, whether it's a medical health situation, a behavioral health situation, oftentimes pharmaceuticals are involved. And the better we are at coordinating access to care and clinical programs around that, we're able to help people either maintain their health, regain their health, we're able to help employers have highly engaged, productive coworkers, which enables their businesses to thrive. Therefore, we are again growing as we step into 2023 with the addition of 1.5 million new customers to our portfolio. So we're off to a great start this year again. Now, you are doing some things that are, it's a very exciting time to be in, in your business. And I wanted you to speak to biosimilars, because I think that a lot of people in Congress want to regulate pricing. I want competition. Biosimilars are fabulous competition for, for someone who works, uh, who is a Sigma client. So biosimilars represent largely one of the greatest affordability gains or improvements in affordability for the American public. And they essentially are pharmaceuticals that are similar to specialty medications that are significantly lower in price, yet have similar clinical outcomes. And we're on the precipice of a significant amount of change. 2023 is a big transitional year where new biosimilars will be available and Cigna, through our Evernorth business portfolio and our, our Credo Specialty Pharmacy, is a leader in the space. So we'll be able to bring more choice to our patients and customers, improve the affordability to our clients, be they an employer or a health plan, and lower out-of-pocket costs for individuals. And that curve, Jim, that you're referencing is just starting. 2023 will accelerate further in 2024 and 2025 with more choice being brought forward for beneficiaries and improved affordability. So it's an exciting time, and we're pleased to be a leader in the space. Well, I know you are. And one of the reasons I do want to talk about uh, about the role of the PBM and Express Scripts, because I have, from your work, candidly, and from your teaching, understood and did not agree initially that, uh, that Express Scripts or Pharma ben Benefit Management really does help the customer. Now, in Washington, there's an investigation which talks about maybe there's not enough transparency and maybe that you, a PBM gets to keep too much money. What you have taught me, and you can tell me whether things have changed, obviously, is that transparency is the role of the PBM, and the PBM argues to get the best price. So can you please explain to me the disconnect between what Congress may be thinking and what I hate to say is just the flat-out truth of the situation? So when you think about the, the market we operate in in the United States, first we have to admit it's somewhat complicated. However, at the end of the day, all health care is highly personal and local. The role of a PBM or a pharmacy service organization is to help to lower prices, ensure that there's access to pharmaceuticals, and importantly, increasingly, be engaged in the clinical management of the polychronic population. Individuals sometimes are on six, seven, eight, nine, ten medications and the clinical coordination that goes around that. Now, as you articulate transparency, we believe significantly in transparency and we've continued to bring forth more and more programs that are, are fully transparent from that standpoint because they create an opportunity to get alignment. Alignment between ourselves and an employer or a health plan or a physician, all with the same objective, to get the best possible clinical outcomes and value for individuals. And as a result, as a pharmacy services organization, we earn between 4 and 5% margin with all the work we're able to do. And we continue to engage with Congress, the FTC, and others to demonstrate those results as we go forward. Lastly, Jim, we're really excited. Over the last few weeks, we rolled out some new programs that we've perfected over the last couple of years um, for the benefit of clients and consumers to either cap out-of-pocket costs or to ensure full transparency for the benefit of employers this will continue to fuel our attractive growth going forward. So we'll engage in that debate and dialogue 
We're confident in the value we create, and we embrace transparency as a mechanism to generate better alignment and more value for those we serve. Well, I think what's important, in addition to everything you said, which I think it helps outcomes, it helps affordability, it helps transparency, it is not like someone has a gun to my head and says, listen, you must choose Cigna. If I decide that everything you just said is not true, I can choose another plan. If I'm an employer with tremendous amount of resources to be able to make the decision, if I felt that Cigna ripped me off with the PBM, I could choose another plan. Is there indeed not freedom of choice in your industry? Oh, there is choice and there's competition. And we're fortunate as an organization, we serve small, medium, and large-sized employers. We serve many of the independent health plans across America. We serve governmental agencies like CMS through Medicare, the Department of Defense, um, and we work with healthcare delivery systems. Think about integrated hospital systems to ensure they have the right specialty medications, but they have choices. And to your point, choice creates competition, Competition creates a relentless drive for in innovation and more value. So, yes, there's ample choice. Now, let's, let's talk about something that is very complicated. Uh, there are these two uh, drugs. Let's, let's just start with Wagovi because Wagovi is diabetes, but also for weight loss. Uh, and then we'll be ultimately go to Moderna, but we don't need to do that. Uh, these are expensive drugs. But we could argue that uh, diabetes obviously uh, is an illness that's chronic, but that weight loss can be abused that there are lots of ways to get weight loss, but the drugs do work. How do you decide, you know what, I want our clients to be sure that they're as thin as possible because we know that's healthy, versus the, uh, the cost of the product and whether it could actually bankrupt the system? So for, first and foremost, when a new medication comes to market, uh, an independent P&T or a clinical committee reviews those medications for clinical efficacy and then for what's called comparative effectiveness, affordability. But clinical efficacy comes first and cent front and center. Wagovi, we were an early adopter of Wagovi. We collaborated with the manufacturer on a contract that paid based on the clinical outcomes for the patient, not just for consumption. But importantly, to the crux of your point, we offer choice. We offer choice to our employer clients or health plan clients. As it relates to drugs in this class, in most cases, the drugs are fully covered for diabetes. Mm -hmm. In most mm -hmm. cases, currently the drugs in this class, employers taking that example, have the choice of expanding coverage for obesity application. And we think this space will evolve over time. So back to choice, it's important to ensure that choice is embraced. Two, the clinical dimension is reviewed independently. Value-based care or making sure payment takes place, in this case, to the pharmaceutical manufacturer based on the outcome, if you take a diabetic population, we want improved health outcomes for diabetics. There's alignment there. And then offering choice back to the employer, we think there's going to be continued innovation in the space, and we will seek to be a leader in support of choice and the clinical programs for the clients and patients we serve. Well, that is excellent, and I think that most, if not all, the people who are watching would agree that that seems like a a fair way to do things. I want to thank David Cordani, Chairman and CEO of the Cigna Group. And gentlemen and ladies, I have been through this war to figure out what's right. You can see which side I've come out with. And believe me, that was not the way I started until David Cordani came on the show many years ago. David, thank you so much for coming back. Thank you, Jim. Good to be with you. Yeah.